Now that we've seen some of the procedures for facials, we want to discuss the types of facials. And what we saw this morning was actually the preservative facial, and that's just to help maintain health. The other type of facial is corrective, and that means there's some type of problem or condition present, such as dryness, oiliness, comedons, aging lines, or even minor conditions of acne. So we always want to make sure we use the proper supplies with whatever the problem is and go through the same basic steps. We may not always do a mask. We may not always use the comedon extractor. We're going to customize our facial to our client. We want to get some guidelines for our facial treatments to make sure we're successful at them. There's good money in it. This is the fastest growing. Nails was the fastest growing. It's kind of reached its plateau. It's still growing. But facials now are coming into line. They've decided first hair, then it was nails, and now they're coming up with the skin that it's got to be the total package. Make sure you help your client relax. Speak in quiet and professional manner. Explain the benefits and products of the service. This is another area for retail. She maybe can't come every week or every three days as oily skin would need. Um, Sell her these products. Provide a quiet atmosphere, work quietly and efficiently. And that means, you see, I didn't have to go into the cabinets and be dragging anything out. It was all sitting there, so I didn't get her attention by fumbling around here and fumbling around there. Maintain neat, clean, sanitary conditions in the facial work area with an orderly arrangement of the supplies. Follow systemic procedures. If your hands are cold, warm them before touching the client's face. Keep your nails smooth and short so we don't scratch their face. Always analyze their skin. One of the biggest mistakes we can make is have the client with oily <laughs> skin and we use products on her for dry skin, which means we're just adding oil on top of oil. So we want to be really careful that we have chosen for her. Some special problems that might be considered include the dry skin, oily skin, and blackheads and acne. Dry skin is caused by an insufficient flow of sebum to the skin. So what do we do during a facial that would help the activation of the sebaceous glands? Would the massage help that? Yes, it activates the glands. We may also use some electrical currents, and we saw the galvanic current in there, and we're going to also work with um, high-frequency current. Oily skin can often be characterized by blackheads or open comedons, which are caused by hardened masses of sebum formed in the ducts of sebaceous glands. Oily skin can benefit from the facial procedure described below, and we'll talk about it in a minute. We may say then, well, if we're massaging dry skin to make the oil glands secrete more, why would we massage oily skin? Because we're going to also speed up the action of the sebaceous glands. Well, we are, but what we're going to do is we're going to do and cleanse that excess uh, sebum whenever we've, we've activated them with a facial for oily skin. With dry skin, we're going to make sure that that sebum is there and stays there because we're not going to use products that would remove it. Acne is also a disorder of sebaceous gland that requires thorough and sometimes ongoing medical attention. If they have true acne, you need to refer them to a physician. Your facial treatments can help with acne, but they need medication that you can't have, products to be used that you're not going to have in the salon. They need that to be prescription. And what you need to do is not come up with your own routine for them. You need to follow their physician's routine. Generally, medical direction <laughs> will limit us to cleansing the skin, reducing the oiliness of the skin by local applications, removing blackheads using proper procedures, and using special medicated preparations that have been prescribed by their physician. Because acne skin contains infectious matter, you must wear protective gloves and also use disposable materials such as cotton cleansing pads. Another thing that's become 
particularly um, popular today is the use of aromatherapy. And you're using it every day, whether you realize it or not. You go buy shampoo that smells good. It's because that smell has an effect on you. Aromatherapy is actually a healing method that should not be used on clients without some training. And that means that you have the training. It requires an in-depth study of plants, essential oils, and the chemistry of those oils, as well as sound knowledge of human anatomy and physiology. We must not attempt to perform healing treatments with aromatherapy. However, that doesn't mean that we can't have aromatherapy in our salons because the other day some people walked in here for a meeting. This place stinks. I know what y'all have been doing. Then the custodian come in a little while later and she said, Oh, these trash bags smell terrible. Well, what is it? Perms, nails, and all that. So we can use candles, potpourri, even some spritzes in the salon for aromatherapy <laughs> effects and to help our clients relax. We may use them in the facial rooms, but what is the drawback of that? Where might we get in trouble with it? Allergies. That's exactly right. Some clients are so sensitive they're going to even be allergic to perfumes we might wear. So you've got to know your client base. If you're unsure about this client, don't do anything or just put a scented candle. They will usually comment on, oh, that candle smells good. I can't use that much because I have an allergic reaction to it. They're, they're usually good about informing you. So make sure if you use any aromatherapy, and I recommend that you do use it because it does have a, a positive effect on people, but use it lightly until you learn. And the facial room is no better place for it. You've laid them back. You're massaging them. You're cleansing them and doing things that feel good. Put a little aromatherapy in there for them. All right, questions?